at the moment, I think in education, there's, there's not a clear understanding from a lot of teachers on how they can use technology effectively to personalise learning, but also meet a lot of the assessment and curriculum demands that have been made of them. This year, Vector has decided to change the way we present and share the results of our commissioned research. To engage our key partners outside the world of Vector, we're holding a series of seminars looking at the key themes we feel have current and significant importance. What is this learner's life like? What other things do go on when they're outside of school as well as the things that go on when they're inside school? And how do we help them to be able to use all the different kinds of resources that could support their learning? And some of those resources will be technology and some of those resources won't be technology. What is the personalisation of learning? Is it differentiation by the back door? No, it really isn't. For the Department of Education and Skills, now the Department for Children, Schools and Families, personalising learning means tailoring education to individual need, interest and aptitude, so as to fulfil every young person's potential, giving learners more opportunities to exercise choice and to make decisions about what, where, how and when they learn. In this last year, Bechter has commissioned research to try and identify the essential ingredients of successful applications of ICT in a personalised learning experience. One of the key issues our researchers have identified is the conflict between risk and trust. Should we let our students do research on MySpace? Can we trust Wikipedia? Where do we draw the line? Our researchers have also looked at the impact on learning and attainment when learner preferences are taken into account. Do risk and trust influence this process? Personalisation of learning is applicable for all students, but in the example we're about to see, it's being used to develop soft skills to support learner transition from primary to secondary school. At Sylvie Park we started a new transition project. The whole idea was to help transition, raise self-esteem, increase motivation, but obviously these skills are quite hard to assess. We needed to find a way, an assessment tool, that the children could use themselves. Personalisation by Pieces is a web-based tool. Every child gets their own account. Most children in our year have started on a level two and it progresses up to a level nine. Just recently what we've done is we've created a recycling project where the main skill we wanted the children to learn or to evidence if you like was presenting to an audience. So with this campaign they went and researched all different facts about recycling and then they've presented it in whichever way they want to. We could do a PowerPoint, we could do plays, songs, um, draw a poster and tell everyone about it. Hello and welcome to Family Debate Show. Today we are debating with two families about recycling. So let's bring on family number one and see what they think about it. They have to submit two pieces of work for each level and they can choose which piece of work they submit. So it's, again, it's not based up to the teacher, it's entirely up to the children and they can do it at home as well. So if they've got hobbies outside of school, brownies, guides, cubs, whatever, they can use evidence of when they've used good communication skills or good teamwork skills outside of school and submit it. I've just submitted three pieces on PYP and it's really fun. It's a good way to learn. So they upload a piece of work onto the system it then gets sent off to other schools. There's about 2,000 children in the country who are using this. So what happens then is each child then becomes an assessor for other children. I'm marking this person's work and it's about bullying. And it says, please rate this piece of work. Well, I'll say it's original. I was looking for like, what it's about and like, who's done it and what's actually in it and how you can solve it. She's got all of them, so that's a pass. You click on a box and it says you have passed or failed and you can write a comment back saying if it's good or not. If I've done what the skill says I need to do, it's a good feedback and I've passed, but if it's not, they send me some information 
which I can use to make it better. There is an issue with monitoring how much work gets submitted, but there is, as an, I'm an emergency assessor uh, for it, and if a child doesn't submit one piece of work every fortnight, then I get a message to say, you know, this child has not submitted anything. There are opportunities where we will give the children um, a vehicle to learn some of the skills. So like with the recycling campaign, we chose a planning skill. So we're having the input of actually coaching more than teaching the children. When we've like got other people's work to mark, they might have a really good idea in it and it might make us think, oh, maybe we could try that. And um, if we try it, we send it off, we get good marks too. So it's like sharing ideas a bit. Technology is really important in personalisation for learning because it's a way of life for the children and we've got to give them the opportunity to use this in school. And again, once it's done safely, securely, and, and there's plenty of monitoring procedures in place, then it is just a way of looking to the future and it's something that has to be incorporated. That's all we have time for this week, but next week we'll be debating with two families about meat eaters and vegetarians. Bye! Many learners today are already creating personalised learning environments for themselves outside of school. However, we found a consistent 10% of learners who are not technology enriched. It's a big story with a long narrative running right through the heart of the philosophy that underpins effective teaching and learning. The bit that I think we need to address is how we help learners who know more about the technology than teachers and teachers who know more about how to learn about a particular subject than learners to have the right kinds of conversations so that it's a different kind of relationship and it's a different kind of negotiation. By commissioning research and holding seminars like this, Vector is supporting the hard work of all professionals who want better opportunities for learners.